welcome to the keynote podcast from Kingdom Faith. Today's message is by Pastor Colin Urquhart. We're on fire this morning. Luke chapter 10. Verse 16. He who listens to you listens to me. He who rejects you rejects me, but he who rejects me rejects him who sent me. The 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. He replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you. But rejoice that your names are written in heaven. At that time, Jesus, full of joy through the Holy Spirit, said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this was your good pleasure. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows who the Son is except the Father. And no one knows who the Father is except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Then he turned to his, eye, to his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings wanted to see what you see but did not see it. And to hear what you hear but did not hear it. So you're blessed of our prophets and kings. Amen. Now then, let's focus especially on this phrase in verse 21, Jesus full of joy through the Holy Spirit. Why does the scripture say rejoice in the Lord always? Because God's purpose is that you are always full of joy in the Holy Spirit. I've been going through quite a torrid time the last two or three days, and the only way to overcome is to rejoice in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So, on Sunday, I brought that message about the seven-fold principles of how to exercise authority, the authority that God has given us. If, for any reason, you weren't there, you need to download that message and listen to it, because it's a must for every single one of us. I'm not going to attempt to repeat what I said then. But those seven principles have to be in place if we are able, if we're going to be able to exercise the authority that God has given us. It's one thing to have that authority. It's another thing to exercise that authority. So when those seven principles are in place, you will be full, and whatever's happening in your life will be full of the authority of the Holy Spirit. And ever since I preached that message, I have been under tremendous spiritual attack. And I have had to rise up and actually exercise that spiritual authority. And this is, this is what happens sometimes when you're a preacher. You bring something that the enemy doesn't like, and boom, he tries to attack. But he can't win. He can't prevail. He can't do anything. I mean, Jesus is so much stronger, and the authority he's given us is so much greater. So, praise God, that doesn't deter us from preaching what we need to preach, no matter if sometimes as preachers we have to go through it as a result. But the enemy was worried by by Sunday's message, which is a good thing, because if the enemy is worried, that means things are going to happen if only we put that message into practice. Now, let's see uh, what uh, is happening in this passage. This is when Jesus uh, sent out the 72. He sent out the 12, and and they'd come back uh, having fulfilled what God sent them out, what Jesus sent them out to do. Then he sent out this 72, and he told them to go and eat what is set before them. Even Rafi's students can do that part. Uh, Then he said, heal the sick, and then tell them why they're healed, because the kingdom of God has come upon you. The kingdom of God is at hand. It's interesting that when he sent out the 12, it was preach and then heal. When he sent out the 72, it's heal and preach. 
But either way around, it works. It's just a question of being sensitive in every situation as to what the Holy Spirit is doing. Now then, they came back full of testimony. Wow! We have just seen such great things. It's like, you know, the Ruffy students going out and coming back and saying, Wow! We've seen such great things today. Amen. Uh, the thing that tickled them most of all was that even the demons submitted to them. Uh, now, of course, <clears throat> demons only submit to you when the demons begin to manifest because there's so much of the power of God about you that they can't keep quiet. You see, you go into a situation where there, there are people that are... Uh, in some kind of, of demonic oppression, and those demons are going to begin to, to manifest themselves, and then, of course, hallelujah, you take authority, and you overcome them in the name of Jesus, they're cast out, and you say, wow, even the demons submit to us. Are we there? And Jesus says to them, well, don't rejoice in that. I mean, really, Jesus is saying, that's small fry. Of course the demons submit to you. Because you belong to the kingdom and they don't. It's a, it's a no-brainer, of course they do. You don't rejoice in that. But rejoice in why they submit to you. Rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Those, those demons, they don't belong to heaven. They belong to the prince of darkness. They're part of the dominion of darkness. And wherever light shines, darkness disappears. So, you know the enemy may come and oppress. I've had to spend hours in the last three nights just praying and overcoming the enemy. Uh, and, and that's okay, it's okay. It's all part of the deal. It's all part of the job. But glory to God, he gives us the victory. And what's happened is during these three days, my joy has increased. And I've, I feel more and more joyful than I've felt for a long time. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's good to overcome. But the reason why we overcome is our names are written in heaven. We belong to the kingdom of heaven. We belong to the rule and the reign of Jesus Christ. And nothing, 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 nothing can withstand the power of the kingdom of God. And that kingdom is within you. So Jesus is saying, don't rejoice just that the demons submit to you. Rejoice that the kingdom is within you. Rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Rejoice in the one to whom you belong. Some of you are looking at me as if I've just zoomed in from Mars. No, 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 no. This is the word of the Lord. Is it not? Have we not just read the Holy Scriptures? Is the Scripture not given for our learning? Yeah. Hallelujah. And, and Jesus, you know, Jesus was, was uh, so touched by this enthusiasm, this, this joy that uh, these disciples were saying that if he, he, he just began to manifest the joy of the Spirit himself. And he began to pray and say, oh, Father, thank you so much that you've hidden these things from the wise and the learned. You know, those guys who think they're big and great and important. And you revealed them just to little babes like these 72 I sent out. Oh, I, it's so neat, Father. It's so wonderful. You've chosen the, the weak and the foolish. And look at the great and mighty things you've done through them. Oh, it's, it's so wonderful, so great. Hallelujah. And you know, we're no sort of great shakes. We're not, we don't claim to be anything great in and of our, ourselves. But how wonderful that the power of God is perfected in our weakness. Amen. So, of course, there's no point in having this authority if we don't use it. If we don't exercise it. Amen? I mean, some of you may have lain there at, at night and there's no sleep. You just have to pray and you just have to keep overcoming. And uh, it's great. 
And I think, oh, I've got to get up at 6.30 in the morning. Lord, will I get any sleep before then? Uh, or or for, get up for the, the 6.30 here in the morning. Thank you, all the ladies that came. I don't know where the men of God were this morning. There were none there apart from myself. But uh, rise up, you men of God, rise up. That's what the word of God says. Rise up, men of God. So get up in the morning, get yourselves moving. Right, now then. I'm full of joy in the Holy Spirit. I'm full of authority, full of power. You see, it only begins to to really flow through you when you begin to use it and exercise it. I think the Lord's just, you know, got me in a place these last few days where I jolly well had to exercise that authority and had to overcome it. Hallelujah! I'm happy. Anybody else happy? So it's time that, you know, you stopped being pushed to and fro. Batted about by the enemy. No, no, we rise up. In faith, we rise up with authority. We take authority. Even the demons submit to us. Because our names are written in heaven. And all those seven principles of how the authority operates in your life, they're all possible for you. They're all things that God has been working in your life in these last in these last few months. All you have to do is to put them together, get them exercised in your life together, and the power and authority is there. It was a good message, wasn't it? Do you know when I knew I was going to preach that message? I didn't know I was preaching until three minutes before the service. You see, it's the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I say I didn't know... I believe the Holy Spirit prepared me when I was praying and he gave me these seven things. So I said, Lord, what am I to say? He said, I've already given you the message. So he knew I was going to preach before I knew. (laughs) But he's good, isn't he? He's neat. (laughs) Hallelujah. It's all right. You don't have to worry because we have to be ready in season, out of season. I was just out of season on Sunday morning, but I was ready. Hallelujah. Because God got me ready. It's just a question of being open to the Holy Spirit. And he's the one that we're going to talk about now. Because, you see, we exercise that authority in and through the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. That's one of the seven things, isn't it? And I just want to focus on that. Because Jesus was full of joy in the Holy Spirit. And when you're flowing in the Holy Spirit, you will be full of joy. Amen. Amen. Now, when you're full of joy, you can't keep it in. It actually has to show on your face. God has given you a face to express what is going on within you. When you look at misery, it's because there's misery going on in you. But, of course, you're never miserable these days because you are always full of joy in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Hallelujah. You know, the enemy, the enemy needs to start to shake when he sees you coming. Oh, look, here comes one of those roughy students. Oh, now we're in for trouble. Amen. Because your name is written in heaven. And he got chucked out. Jesus said, I saw him fall like lightning from heaven. He's fallen. You've been raised up. You're seated in heavenly places. You see, when you exercise authority, you are actually exercising authority from your position in heaven. There's the enemy. He's got chucked out. All he can do is go to and fro over the earth. And there you are seated in heaven saying, Bing, gotcha. You know, you get, you get that spiritual catapult and you just start firing it. All he's got is little fiery arrows. and you, You're like David. Goliath's too big to miss. I mean, he wasn't afraid of him. He said, he's too big to miss. Bang! 
Down goes Goliath. Hallelujah. Praise God. The enemy is too much of a sucker to miss. He, keep, he keeps, you know, he tries to hide himself, and then before you know yourself, it's all out in the open. You see who it is. Yeah, get out. It's nice to have someone that you can kick in the teeth. You have to be nice to everybody else because you're a Christian. But you never have to be... You never have to be nice to the devil. This is going to be a good term. I'm going to enjoy this term. Amen. I mean, we are mighty warriors, aren't we? God's raising up an army. The trouble is in God's army, in, in most churches, they're all in the kitchen. They're not in the trenches. They're all stuffing themselves and wanting the next meal and there's nobody doing the fighting. They, go, they get a, a little scratch and they're in the, in, the, uh, in the field hospital instead of out there. Yes, come on. Hallelujah. I feel about 25 this morning. (laughs) Hallelujah. (laughs) Ah, the Lord's renewing my youth. Like the eagle, hallelujah. Soar in heavenly places with him. So the Holy Spirit is given to you not for you to sort of hide him. Oh, hallelujah, I'm filled with the Spirit. (laughs) No, 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 no. If you're filled with the Spirit, the Scripture says, you're filled with power. Amen. Filled with the power of the Spirit. You're filled with the authority of God Himself. Because the Holy Spirit is God, isn't He? He's not less than God. He's God. Yes? The third person of the Trinity is God. So you have the life of God, the power of God, the joy of God, the authority of God, the wisdom of God. You know, He leads you with wisdom in the way that you are to go. All we have to do is to be submitted to him. Submitted to the Spirit. So we let him lead us where he wants us to go. Praise you, Jesus. So what is it that You need to overcome. Because things do crop up all the time. You know, we're not always under the kind of attack I've I've, I've talked about, but we want to keep ourselves free. It's your responsibility. It's the responsibility of every Christian to submit to God, resist the devil, and see him fleeing. Praise God. So, another of those, those principles was that we're actually being obedient to the leading of the Spirit. We're abiding in Christ so that as we obey His commands, there's no conscious, deliberate disobedience. You see, how can the powers of darkness, how can we expect them to obey us if we're not obeying the Lord? Are we getting this? If we are walking in obedience, then we can expect to have authority over all that is disobedient to the Lord. Amen? And as I explained on Sunday, the more those seven principles are operating in your life, the greater your ability to exercise authority. So when you see somebody sort of exercising more authority than, than you do currently, it's simply that those seven things are operating in that person's life in, in a greater way than they're operating in your life at present. But the more those seven principles operate in your life, the greater your capacity to actually manifest that authority that God has given you. And can you remember that the... The, uh, I'm not going to preach all seven, so I don't think I am. But the, fir- the first, of, that Jesus had authority because of who he is. 
He said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. Now, who gave him that authority? The Father gave him that authority. So he had that authority as son of God. He had that authority as the Christ, the anointed one. Now, you have authority because of who you are. You are someone who is in Christ. You are someone in whom Christ lives. You are, not the Christ, but you are an anointed one. And he has anointed you. You have that anointing of the Holy One, and that anointing remains. So just as Jesus exercised authority because of who he is, so you exercise authority because of who you are in him. And then we saw that, of course, to exercise that authority that he had been given, Jesus had to be in that place of submission to his father. You know, speaking only what his father gave him to speak, doing only what he saw his father doing, doing his, the father's will, not his own will. So he was perfectly submitted to the Father so he could perfectly manifest that authority. So you are who you are. Now, God has made you who you are. You didn't, you didn't uh, put yourself into Christ. You didn't make yourself a new creation. You didn't make yourself a child of God. He, he made you a child of God. But that, that, that person that you are in him that position that you have in him gives you authority. But like Jesus, as he had to submit to the Father so that that authority that he had could be actually manifested, so as you submit to him and obey him, that authority can then be revealed through your life. It's the same principle, you see. And when Jesus sent these men out, they went in obedience. They did what they were sent to do. And because they did what they were sent to do in obedience to Jesus, they came back saying, wow, it works. Even the demons submit to us. Glory to God. So, you see, we can't can't change the basis upon which spiritual things operate in the lives of God's people. We have to go according to the principles of the Word of God. So, just as Jesus submitted to the Father in all things so that he could exercise that authority in a perfect way, so the more we are submitted to him, the more of that authority can actually be exercised in our lives. Somebody say hallelujah quick. And of course, when when we see that what we do is effective, that actually does give us joy. I mean, you see somebody healed, you're not sad about it. You're not saying, oh Lord, you healed somebody, how dreadful. No, 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 You're, you're happy about it because you've seen the power of God at work But what is even more important, God has been glorified in what he has done. You didn't do the healing, he did the healing, but he did the healing because you exercised authority. And we saw that last week, didn't we, when I had some of you forward here praying, and and yeah, we saw some things happen, but I, I explained to you, didn't I, that much more could have happened if you had prayed and spoken and acted with much greater authority. Yeah? But we learned from my mistake. I, I learned a big, big lesson from, from uh, what I consider to be a failure on my part to exercise authority. I was preaching at a big um, national conference in South Africa. And um, God was moving actually very powerfully. Lots of wonderful, wonderful things were happening. And at the end of... Uh, one of the the meetings where I've been speaking, some people came to me and said, there's a a woman here. Uh, She's got a a 14-year-old boy who's 
seriously ill with a brain tumor. Would you come and pray for him? So I said yes, and there was that, that black mama there, and she had this, this uh, he was a long, gangling young teenager, 14-year-old, sort of draped, draped across her knee. He was all skin and bones. His, uh, the tumor had made him blind and deaf. Uh, he was in a, a really, really poor way. Well, I'd just seen God do so much, so many people healed during the meeting. I was up for anything. So I prayed. And as I prayed, I knew, I absolutely knew for certain that God was going to heal that boy. But I didn't see him healed. And all I could say to his mother is I know for sure God will heal your boy. He will not die. And, and I sort of walked away feeling, I suppose I, I just felt a failure because I knew that was the purpose of God, but I didn't see it happen. A couple of days later, uh, I was at an, an, another meeting. I wasn't speaking at this, this time. Somebody else was. But at the end of, of that, people were sent to various places. It was a big conference. There were thousands of people. So people were sent to various uh, areas for, to pray over various needs. And, of course, one of those areas was those that needed healing. And there was this dear black lady with a 14-year-old boy. And I saw a, 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 a group of Christians just surround him and pray for him. And I saw that boy walk out of the building totally healed. Totally healed. Now, I knew that was going to happen because God made that clear to me. But I had some issues now. I had some business to do with the Lord. So I thank the Lord, and I thank the Lord for all those that have been blessed and encouraged by seeing their prayer answered in such a miraculous way. But then I said to the Lord, Lord, why didn't it happen when I prayed? And he just said to me, because you need to exercise greater authority when you pray. Whew. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Salutary lesson to learn, because, you know, so often when we pray, especially for needs of sickness, we accept whatever we see as God's answer to the prayer. And what I learned that day was actually the answer you get is in proportion to the authority that you've used when you prayed. It's got actually very little to do with the words you pray, but with how much authority you pray. Yeah. It's a big, big lesson. And I thank the Lord for it. And I think so often, you see, we accept what we see and fail to realize if only we rose up in authority and ensured that those seven principles are operating in our lives. I, I told people, didn't I, on Sunday, right, write those seven things down, piece of paper, stick it in your Bible, check them through at least once a week to make sure that you are praying with authority. See, just praying without that authority 
you won't nearly see so much and you'll think, well, that's the sum total of what God was prepared to do in answer to your prayer. No, what he actually did was to answer your faith stroke authority. You can't separate the two. See, faith isn't just believing what God can do or even knowing what he will do. Faith sees it happen. And, and I mean, it was so simple for Jesus, get up and walk. You know, he didn't pray some long prayer. He didn't start casting demons. Get up and walk. Be open. Blind eyes open. Deaf ears open. According to your faith, let it be done to you. Immediately the person was healed. It's all so simple, but you see, he was speaking with such authority. And that's what that Roman centurion understood. Speak the word only, and my servant will be healed. Why? Because you speak with such authority. If you say it, it will happen. I want to be in that place, don't you? Well, you've just got to say it, and it will happen. Do you think God wants to take us to that place? Do you think he's leading us on into that place? Hallelujah. Sometimes, you know, like I've been going through these last three days, you, you get that fight the good fight of faith. But the great thing about the fighting the good fight of faith is you always win. You never end up on the losing side because you're on Jesus' side and he doesn't know how to lose. He's far more effective even than Arsenal. He never loses. You know, I, I, I want to back the side that never loses, don't you? Jesus united. Hallelujah. Are you in his team? See, don't stay on the subs bench. You're on the team. You're on the field. You're not waiting for action. Yes? You've, you've got issues to overcome. I'm sure every single person in this room has got issues at this moment where you need to overcome. You need victory. You need to see resolution. You need to see a release. You need to see the whole situation moving on. Yes? yes? So, you know, we want to say, oh, Lord, the matter is in your hands. Yes, he says, I know, but I've given you authority. Why don't you exercise it? Because <clears throat> my hands are waiting for your authority, and then my hand, will, my mighty arm, will be stretched out. And when his mighty arm is stretched out, ho, ho, Goodness help anything that opposes him. Amen. Are we getting this? Yeah. And of course, great authority, release of great authority leads to the release of great power, but always to be done in great love. See, Jesus could have this great authority, but he wasn't authoritarian. You know? He exercised that authority in love. So it, for him, it was simple get up and walk. You know, I wish I'd been able to say to that 14 year old boy with the tumor, get up and walk. Perhaps if I'd said that, it would have happened. I don't know. I, when, when I think back to that time, I, I'd just seen in the meeting where I'd been speaking, I'd just seen so many miracles happen. I think I, perhaps I just thought, oh, well, you know, the Spirit of God is moving. All I've got to do is pray and it will happen. And then God said to me, no, you need to exercise greater authority. 
situation like that. So praise the Lord, because this is what we're going to do, isn't it? I don't just mean this morning. I mean, we've got about, I don't know how many, three months or so, haven't we, to faith camp? Supposing we have three months of exercising authority, think what could happen at faith camp. And think what would happen if the thousands of people at faith camp all got the message and all began to exercise authority. I mean, we'd clear a few demons out of this nation, wouldn't we? We would see the release of God's power in so many ways. Okay, now just before we... We may as well do it this morning. Anybody agree with that? Okay. Just, just before we do that, let's see the context in which God is saying all this to us. Because last week he was talking to us about his grace and goodness. You see, we have the authority, right, to release the goodness of the Lord into one situation after another. Uh huh. And all this is part of God's reforming process. Didn't he say he's taking us through a process of reformation? That what he is going to do in the nation, among the nations, is a new reformation. Now, the reformation is going to be far more than exercising authority, but there isn't going to be any reformation without exercising authority. Reformation is reforming the church. It's it's doing what God said to us, Last week, ask for the ancient ways. You know, I was just going through my prayer diary. I think, was it yesterday? I don't know. It might have been in the middle of the night tonight. I don't know. I've done so much praying these last few days. But the, uh, the, uh, what, what, uh, and I went back to to what he said, actually said to me at that time. And, um, you know, he said, There's always been a pride. I mean, this is my words, not his exact words, but what what he was saying to me was this. There's there's a pride among many Christians, and they're always looking for the new thing. And the Lord said, looking for the new thing leads to inevitable deception. Hmm. And that is what happens, isn't it? You know, oh, this is the new teaching, this is the latest thing, this is, you know, revelation people have never heard before. And people are often heresy before they know where they are, without realizing it. But, but the Lord said, if, you, if you're seeking something new, you're just opening the door to deception. Because actually, there isn't anything new. There's the Word of God, and that's not new. There's the Spirit of God. He's not new. He makes people new, but He's not new. Right? There's the ancient path, and that's not new. That's the well-trodden path that the saints of old have always trodden through generations that have really met with God in revival power. So we're not sort of sitting around saying, Lord, give us a new revelation that is going to change everything. Because what it does is, is the Lord, it said... It leads, these new things lead to deception and compromise. That's what he said to me. I've got an idea. I did a tweet on it. I can't remember now. But uh, inevitable deception and compromise. But you see, in the word of God, there's no deception. It's the word of truth. There's no compromise. And there's certainly no compromise with the Holy Spirit. People may compromise, but the Holy Spirit will never compromise. God will never compromise. Amen? Amen. So we're not looking for something new. We're we're very content to ask for the ancient ways. And you see, part of that is to walk on the narrow way to live in Christ Jesus by exercising the authority he's given us as believers. So what are we going to do now? Well, in a moment, we're going to get to our feet and we're going to praise the Lord for the authority he's given us. I mean, you can't use what you don't believe you have. 
So the first thing is you've got to believe you have it. And let me tell you, authority is not a feeling. <laughs> With the attack that I've been under these last few days, I can tell you authority has got absolutely nothing to do with feeling. In fact, the exercise of authority come, overcomes all the negative feelings and all the oppression and all the attack that the enemy wants to bring against you. It leads to that release of joy. You see, the 72 came back rejoicing that the demons submitted to them and Jesus was full of joy in the Holy Spirit. I've always said joy is the barometer of your faith. You can tell, you know, how people are moving in faith as to whether they're joyful or not. When they've ceased to be joyful, they're no longer moving in faith. I I think I want to say that, you know that joy is also the barometer of the exercise of your authority. Because how can you divide the exercise of faith and the exercise of authority? They go hand in hand, don't they? So, you see, God doesn't want you to pray about situations. He wants you to exercise authority in prayer over those situations. This is why Jesus says, if you have faith... You see, this is the exercise of faith. If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, go and be moved in the sea, and it will be moved. Faith leads to the exercise of authority. How do you exercise authority? By issuing commands. That's why Jesus said, speak to the mountain. Command that problem to move. You don't say, I speak to this mountain in the name of Jesus and command it to move. See, that's a formula. What is the mountain? The mountain is the need. The mountain is the problem. The mountain is the situation that is blocking the way that needs to be moved out of the way. You speak to that situation. But Jesus says, when you speak to it, you must believe in your heart that it will be moved. Why do you believe that? Well, because God is faithful, but because you know you are exercising the authority that God has given you. Are we there? Praise God. So this is exciting, isn't it? I can just see how excited you are. I can see you can hardly contain yourselves with excitement. You can hardly stay sitting in your chair. You're just so keen to rise up and exercise that authority and and get some victory. Hallelujah. Oh, praise you, Jesus. Come on, let's lift our hands, lift our hearts, lift our voices. Praise him. Thank him for that authority that you have. Thank you for listening to this Kingdom Faith podcast. We trust it's been an encouragement to you. For more information and resources by Kingdom Faith and for our other audio and video podcasts, please visit kingdomfaith.com.